Welcome to Walk Worthy. I am Erin. And I'm Lindsay. And today we are going to be talking about bearing burdens. Uh, the scripture talks about bearing one another's burdens, mm-hmm. um, which we're going to read a verse in a second. And so we're going to talk about how we kind of fail at this a lot, how we can do it well, um, and what it looks like to really support brothers and sisters in Christ through crisis, through whatever it is that they're going through. So um, I guess let's read that our theme verse. All right. If you want to call it that. <laughs> uh, Galatians 6, 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. So I guess let's kind of define what is bearing one another's burdens. Let's not assume people know what that means. Yeah. Well, so the scripture, that word bear, means that we're taking up in order to carry or So we're putting something on ourselves. So you we were trying to... If you think about taking a load off of somebody and help them carry something that they're mm-hmm. struggling with or some crisis, we're supporting that. So it's maybe not always fair to say crisis because a burden could be a right. crisis, but it could just be a difficult situation. Maybe someone's life has a lot of components, so we're just helping bear the burden. Maybe they're just overwhelmed in a moment. Yes. It's not necessarily a crisis, but there's just like a lot going on. Yes, mm-hmm. right. Um, but it could be crisis. And so we'll probably talk more about crisis than anything else because I think crisis <coughs> is really the place where... We could use a little help. Yeah, we struggle. (laughs) We don't know what to do. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, and sometimes when we think about bearing someone's burden, sometimes our motive is really good and we do want to help. And other times we kind of see this burden and we're like, I don't, you know, so we do kind of the passing, hey, how you doing? Yeah. But we don't really want it to get on us. I know that I've been guilty of that where I know someone's going through something. I know, like, I know what it is, Mm -hmm. but... I don't know what to do or yeah. I don't know what to say. So I just don't say anything or I don't do anything. And sometimes that can be more hurtful than, you know, even just asking how they're doing. Right. You know, right. Like, oh, well, Lindsay didn't care. Right. I know she knows <laughs> and she doesn't care, <laughs> you know. <Right. clears throat> yeah. And unfortunately, we can we can handle this badly. And, and crisis for some reason brings out some really strange things in people. Mm-hmm. And, and I do think... A lot of times the motive is good, but the execution is very poor. Yeah. So maybe we should talk about a little, like how we do this badly, but then maybe how we can do it well. Yes. So I think one of the worst things that we do is Christian platitudes, mm-hmm. you know, where someone's really in crisis and we'll just do a drive-by, God is good. And yeah. you're like, okay, it's not untrue, but that's super unhelpful right now. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and all the time, God is yeah. good. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not not true. <laughs> right. But, but super not helpful. Right. Well, yeah. and, you know, there are things like that you can say. There's also, like, immediately, like, okay, well, what does the Bible say about this? Like, when someone's going through yeah. something, like, oh, rejoice in your suffering. Like, yeah. okay, well, they don't really, like, they're not at a place <laughs> yes. to hear it's that, like you know? Like, read right. the situation, read what's going on. Um, instead of just, you know, saying things like, oh, I did my good deed for the day. Like, God is good. Praise right. the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord in your suffering. Right. And, oh, they're going to be okay. I gave them, I encouraged them today. And, and the Bible is very encouraging and very helpful, but yeah. just firing a verse at somebody is not always helpful no. which seems weird because it seems it like does you seem should weird. be able to just fire a verse and it's fine yes but sometimes that can almost feel like a brush off like you said I checked the box I sent them a verse yes verses are appropriate at certain times there are times where I will send someone a verse <clears throat> excuse me like I read this and I really thought about where you're going through mm-hmm. not because I searched for it and was like really trying to find it so yes. I could check off the good deed but I literally was reading the bible and I thought of that person and thought you know what this was really good for where they're at and so I might send it depending yeah. on my relationship with them for sure you know it's I'm not there are, there are people in crisis all the time. I'm not just pepper spraying people with verses like, yes. this is for you, that's for you. You know, it really does depend on relationship a lot. Absolutely, yeah. And like you said, how close are you to the person? How close are you to the situation? Um, and like, is it appropriate in those moments to really speak those things to people? I think sometimes we like want to think we're closer to somebody like, people often want to know people's business so they'll kind of like insert themselves like oh I know them like we can sometimes think we're going to be like a hero a little Mm -hmm. bit we make it about us like oh we're going to feel good because this person's going through a hard time and I'm going to be the one that can encourage them yeah exactly (laughs) when really like they're probably like oh I wish this person wasn't bugging me I don't even know them yeah we often think like and I don't know that we're always doing it willfully but that's why I think it's really important to like when someone is in a crisis, like search your heart, search mm-hmm. your motives before you take those actions and yeah. those steps to know like, okay, am I doing this for me because I want to feel good about myself or I want people to know that I helped this person right. or do I genuinely feel like God is asking me to do this for this person? 
Yeah, because amazingly, <clears throat> we very often make, when we're not the one in crisis, but we still make the crisis about ourselves, yeah. which is amazing. And and I, I, I'm saying these things because I've been guilty of all these things too. So yeah. I don't want to paint this like I do everything right. And when crisis happens, I know exactly how to handle it and what to say. Right. Not saying that. I have failed. I have been in crisis where I've witnessed things that people have done where you're like, huh, you know, hmm. <laughs> Maybe I have done this as well, but yeah. okay. But you, you learn in those you moments. You do. You really do. But we make it a lot about ourselves, and you'll hear people get offended at somebody who's in crisis, which is amazing because the last thing they need to do is be managing anybody else's emotions. Yeah. You know, but you know, people will be offended that they didn't get the information first, or something was posted on Facebook but wasn't texted. And the reality is, when somebody is in crisis, they really can't go through their entire address book and be like, okay, Auntie Sue or <laughs> yeah. Uncle Bob. You know, I need to make sure that I text these people in addition. Like, you're just communicating with who you can communicate, yep. and, and it is what it is. And so mm -hmm. sometimes people are offended that they're not called, they're not the one called on, mm -hmm. and they get upset about it, but you have then hijacked the crisis and made it about yourself, yeah. you know, and you can't do that. Right, or even so, like maybe you reach out to the person, maybe you don't hear back from them. Like, yes, oh, I was trying to be nice to them, I was trying to help them, I just really wanna help them, and yeah. they're not even responding they to me. They couldn't even heart my text. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> like it's it's pretty easy. Like at least I would know they got it. Exactly. But like come on. And there's an exit when I I am careful about but I also tend to be like, oh I don't want to bother somebody. So then sometimes I err on the side of Same. not. Yes. And I have just learned it's better to just send something, but I always, always either text it or message it on Facebook and say, there is no need to respond. Yeah. I just want you to know I'm praying for you or whatever, because I really want them to know I'm not giving you an obligation on top of all the other things that you're carrying on top of all the decisions that you're making. Yeah. Please do not feel obligated to write back to me in any <clears throat> capacity. I just want you to know I'm praying for you and I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, and two, I think sometimes we can like give a person in a crisis a to-do list. Like, oh, yes. let me know if I can do anything. Yeah. Like so vague, which it is like nice to say that because yeah. sometimes you don't know what to do. Yeah. You just want to know you're available. So it's not bad to always say that, I don't right. think. But sometimes you just need to like do it. Like yes. I'm going to do this. Yes. Or I can do these things. Yes. Pick one. Yes. Or pick all of them. Right. <clears throat> or we can try to tell someone how they should be managing their crisis. Yeah. And the amount of unsolicited advice that comes in is astounding mm -hmm. you know like well when my sister this and that and you should she should and you're like yeah. okay and a lot of the times particularly in the medical profession or you know if someone is sick you are dealing with actual medical professionals right. who do have a job and do know how to do their job <laughs> so right. it's really nice you know but and I, I th again, I think people's motives are helpful, mm -hmm. but the the advice is not helpful unless asked. You know, there are times when people might ask, but sometimes people just feel they need to tell you about every story they ever knew about somebody that had cancer or chemo or didn't take yeah. it or did or radiation or this or that yeah. or this drug or not. And you're like, okay, I'm already making decisions. I have medical professionals yeah. advising me. If I need advice, I'll ask mm -hmm. for it. But so I think we need to be very, very careful about just inundating people with advice. And I think sometimes in those situations, our motive can be like, well, I just want to give them hope that like these things, yes. you know, which is nice. Yeah. But at the same time, like every situation is different yes. and it's kind of just adding to the noise of yes. what's going on. That's a good way to say it. You're adding to the noise. It's not that it's bad. It's not that it's your motive is bad, but the amount of noise in and around a crisis yeah. is astounding. So to add anything to it is mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. it, it might be the straw that just breaks the person. Like I can't, I can't do this. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So all of those things are un unhelpful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And like you said, we've been guilty of them as well. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of are saying it all in jest, but really like yeah. even if you're not outwardly doing these things, sometimes you can like see them starting in your heart and then you stop yourself like, wait a second. Yeah. What is this about? And so, I mean, even that, like we're still guilty of it, even if we're not yes. acting out on those things, yes. I guess. Um, <clears throat> any other ways we do it poorly? <laughs> We've said a lot. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. Well, I think the only other thing I would say is sometimes there are things that happen that are so difficult and inexplicable that to try to give any answers or make it make sense, you can't. And mm -hmm. so it's a disservice to the person emotionally, spiritually, to try to explain away their crisis yeah. and say, this is how, this is why, or try to give reasons. Sometimes the reality is, I don't know why mm -hmm. this happened to you. And I'm really sorry. You know, I do believe there's hope. I do believe God has purpose. 
I can't spell that out for you right yeah. now. And I think it's better sometimes just to just leave it at, yeah. I don't know. Well, and I think sometimes when we try to give an answer or make it make sense, we can almost um, like put God, like paint their view of God differently in that moment, yeah. you know, like and kind of um, not be painting his love in that moment because there's just a logical, this is why, this is why, this yeah. is why, not just like God's going to love you through this and I am too. Yeah. You know, we try to reason it instead of just like, through this, I'm going to love you and I'm going to show God's love to you because it's probably hard for you to see that right now. Yeah. You know, we think about Job's friends that came and they had all the answers. Well, you're in this really terrible situation because it was sin. Yeah. And it wasn't. They were wrong. They were wrong. You know, and, it, you know, and he sat for days listening, yeah. this, scraping at his boils with stones and listening to his friends give him all mm -hmm. kinds of unsolicited advice. That and through that could have felt like so condemned by God, yes. like. God, why would you do this to me? Like, I've been mm -hmm. faithful to you. I've, like, walked in righteousness. Right. Like, and that just kind of changes your view of God when really that's not even what was going on. Right. Yeah. So who are we to think that we, like, God gave me the answer. Why right. Why is happening to you? Like, it's obviously sin. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So let's talk about how we can do this well. Again, we don't have all the answers. Right. We don't know exactly, like, step one, step two, right, do this, right. and everyone will be happy in crisis, and... Right. It's not what's happening, but to just know how to be there for the person. So number one, I would say remove your, like, and don't make it about you. Yeah. Be completely unselfish as you come into a situation. I think of the picture of if you had two animals, you know, one was really loaded down with a burden and then the other one's walking beside, you're not adding to it. You're trying to take off and carry. Yes. Um, when a couple of years ago, our house burned down to the ground and I, it was, it's just a crazy busy time. But I had this little window of time in the afternoon where I was going to go to my house and just see if any of my jewelry survived. Mm -hmm. You know, I had like a, an engagement ring that my dad had given to my mom, you know, mm -hmm. some sentimental pieces yeah. that a couple of things that Wes had given me. And I pulled up. It was like 85 degrees. You can imagine the house is disgusting. Stanky. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> so it's like a combination of everything is smoky and ashy. But then the water that they poured on, so then there's starting to be some really funky smells with mold in the, you know, it was pretty yeah, open yikes. because a lot of it was burned. <laughs> right. But, but, and then there was like a freezer in the back that had had meat in it. Ooh. There were flies. It was just really gross. Mm -hmm. 85, hot. I had no roof on, so that sort of helped in the upper level with the smell, but yeah. it was gross. And uh, my friend pulled in and... You know, in the moment in crisis, you're, you're just like, okay, I have this quick window. And yeah. and so you don't know because someone could pull in and be like, I just want to catch up and see how you are. That is not, this is not, this is not where I'm at right yeah. now. If you want to come alongside and see where I'm at, great. If not, please just let me do what I'm doing. Yeah. That's kind of like in crisis. Don't be offended, but this is where you're at. Yes. And she's so great. We've been friends for a long time and she's like, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm good. And she's like, well, what are you doing? And I told her, I was like, oh, you know, well, I was going to, you know, go dig through the ashes of my house yeah. <laughs> and um and she's like oh well, I'll help you and I was like it's so gross yeah. it's like so disgusting uh -huh. and she's like no really I'll, I'll come up and help you and she did so we were probably there for like an hour and a half and that was basically all the time that I had yeah. for that task and we were picking up handful by handful okay that's ash wow. you know oh this is some nasty costume jewelry that melted you know <laughs> but every now and then we would find something in there yeah. and uh, I still have some of that stuff but the point is that she came alongside and got in line with what was already going on. Yeah. She didn't add something else. She didn't ask me to do something else. She didn't suggest, about, well, you know, maybe we should go get these tools or before yeah. we try, maybe we should do it a different day. No, 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 this is the moment. This is all the time that I have. And that literally was the only window. I never got to go back there and look again. Right. And she came alongside in the disaster and helped. She like got in the muck with yeah, me. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Literal literally. Muck. <laughs> and the, the thing about crisis is we can't, fix it for somebody you can't change where somebody's at she couldn't unburn the house right mm -hmm. but she could get in the muck with me and help and I yeah. think that's a good picture of you know how do we do this for somebody you, you're not going to be able to fight their battle you're not going to be able to fix their crisis but you can get in it with them alongside of them and and just walk with them with yeah. whatever they're doing however they're doing it even if you think there's a different way that it should be done or you have some other opinion like, it's about them and how they want to manage it, you know? Right. I was thinking that earlier. Like, you have to let the person in crisis manage their crisis. Yes. Not yes. the other way around. How they want. <laughs> and and I think some people yeah. in crisis talk a lot to a lot of people. And other people, I'm more kind of like, I just got have to, I just need a minute. I uh -huh. just need to, like, 
see like assess the lay of the land here where yeah. am I at and like and I'll, I'll I will talk to people but I, I need a minute to mm-hmm. just like I don't know yeah just you need to figure out my kind life. of like figure out the person and like how they're processing yes. the crisis and then try to help in that way yes. not how you would necessarily right. do it but how they want to do it yep um and just doing that in really tangible ways mm-hmm. like your friend did just showed up yeah. I'm gonna be here beside you and you know, literally dig through this. Yeah. Not, you're not just there through a text message. And maybe that's what's appropriate for whatever the relationship right. is, again, with mm-hmm. reading that situation. Um, but then, like we were saying, like help in practical ways. Like I can bring you a meal. I can watch yes. your children. I can drive you somewhere, take your kids places. Like these are the things I'm available mm-hmm. to help you do. And then like be available to do those right, things. Right, right, <laughs> Like let your yes be yes. Yeah. Even if you only have <clears throat> one day, I think because it's hard if someone's like, oh, whatever I can do, and I'm thinking, okay, so are you available on the day that I need somebody? Do you want to do the task that I want? You know, yeah. But then, if then, then you're said, in an awkwardness, like, yes, Ugh. right. But if someone said, I'm available Friday for these hours, what do you need? Mm-hmm. You know, that is more helpful to me, at least, than saying whatever, whenever, however. Yeah. Kind of like, and then you okay, ask, and they're like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it that day. <laughs> and and gift card, like, if you want to just send a gift card, yeah. gift cards are always appreciated for everything. And in crisis, we have all the normal things that we're managing anyway. So, you know, for you, you still would have your house to run. You still, there's still, you do still have to eat. You still need groceries. You still need meals. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, they still have to be watched. And then in crisis, there are often appointments and other things that you're doing on top of that. So I guess I think of particularly for women, helping them carry the regular everyday things so that they can then go manage the extra things of the crisis is helpful, whatever Mm -hmm. that looks like. Yeah, definitely. Um, It's not appropriate for everyone to come in and do my laundry, but there are some people that would be like, that would be so great. (laughs) Please come do my laundry, you know? Exactly. So it depends on the relationship, and that's huge. And just being practical, like, okay, if I was in this situation, what would actually be helpful to me? And then trying to help in those ways. Yes. And then spiritually, obviously, because that is our hope. That is how Mm -hmm. we get through a crisis is by relying on the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And so trying to be an encouragement to people in that way, Mm -hmm. in the right moment, according to the need of the moment. According to the need of the moment. That is a great verse. It is. Um, And it's so true. Like sometimes you just have to say that to yourself, like, according to the need of, like, is this the moment? Mm -hmm. Um, Praying for a person, obviously. Um, going to the Lord on their behalf. Really actually praying. Really. Lord, yes. please help this person. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But really, and, <clears throat> you know, maybe finding out, again, what's appropriate for you to know, but what do you really need prayer for? Mm-hmm. How are you praying? Yeah. And how can I join you in that? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we're praying things that, like, that's not what the person is. Like, it's what we would think we would want, but it's not really what where they're at. Yeah. It's like, how are you praying? And how can I pray for you mm-hmm. in that way? Yeah. Um. And then, like we talked about encouraging with verses and things like Mm -hmm. that, as appropriate. And there's a fine line spiritually between feeling good about ourselves or doing something spiritual and actually doing what the Lord asks. For sure. And I always have to ask myself, because there are times when people come to my mind and I do pray for them, and and often I'll text someone and say, hey, I'm praying for you, because I do want to be an encouragement, but I have to also be careful that I'm not doing that just so that I felt good and, and I filled my spiritual quota of people I you know what yeah. I'm saying? And they know that you prayed for them yeah, now, like in a prideful you. way, which sometimes yes. I've texted friends like, hey, I wanted you to know I'm praying for you this week. I know you have this going on or whatever. Mm. And sometimes they're like, thank you so much. Right. Sometimes it could just be like, oh, I prayed for you. Yeah. They so don't I, care. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there was no reason. Like. Right. Right. So, you know, I, there can even be some of ourselves, even for in sure. something as supposed to be spiritual yeah. as praying for people that we have to be careful that it's still not about us, that it really is. I really have gone to the Lord on your behalf and I'm praying for these things. And, you know, Mm -hmm. that it's not like, you know, I helped him in this way. We just have to be so careful. Yes, because we are prone to make it about us. It's who we are as humans. Yes, We're always going to want the glory and make it about us if we aren't in the fight for that. It's so embarrassing. It is. We're all like that. Yeah, I know. (laughs) What is wrong with (laughs) us? I don't know. (laughs) pride dog it's on it. horrible but you ha- you know yeah and people will be oh yeah i know i took them a meal yeah they were really struggling yeah you do them, something you know? and then you feel but and i you know fight against this too like you do something then you want to make sure somebody else knows yeah about it, which is like yeah Ugh. make sure you like get a quick pick you can insta that yeah so here's the meal i left on their doorstep taking a meal to a <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. hashtag <laughs> praise the lord like oh my gosh i hate us <laughs> i know 
humanity. <laughs> but it's true. I it mean, this is, is true. And like, oh. if we don't talk about it, we're not going to recognize those things in our life right. and be like, wow, that's me. That's gross. I'm that yeah. person and I hate that. And Lord, please change me. Mm-hmm. Um, something, making it about us too. I know like sometimes it can be a temptation and a struggle. Like I've had people in my life that I just care about. And for some reason, God has given me like uh, a place in their life to speak things to them. You know, whether it's been like a youth kid or something like that. Yeah. And you know they're going through something and it's horrible. And so you can you can carry that burden so much mm. that you start to feel like you have to be their savior. You yeah, know, we can true. get tricked because we're trying to help this person and maybe you are called to help them, mm. but you can take that burden on so much that you feel like the responsibility. Like if, if I don't do this, like it's not going to get fixed. Yeah. You can try to become Jesus to them and you're yep. going to fail them anyway. Yep. Um, but it's also just becomes like really unhealthy, even as the person trying to help in crisis is you take it upon yourself. You know, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you're stressed. Right. Like I need to go get them. I need to protect them. I need to do these things instead of just committing, like doing what you can and committing them to the Lord. Like God, they're yours mm-hmm. and I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to help them how I can, but like ultimately you have to do this. I think sometimes people think that is very, feels very insensitive yeah. because there's a boundary there of you know, I have to turn you back, but ultimately their crisis, it talks in James about consider it pure joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce perseverance and then you're supposed to let it have it work. It's works so that you will be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. Yeah. So the point of our crisis is it, it ought to refine us, but if we're always trying to play God to that person and meet every need and be everything, we're doing them a disservice because they're still not going to the Lord in the way that they should be to let that trial have its work. Yeah. And sometimes the person bearing the burden can be offended at those helping, like, where, you know, why aren't they doing more? And, and ultimately, we have to ultim- go to the Lord. Yeah. This is what this is about. So it's important. I really like what you said, that we do help people spiritually. We do help them tangibly. We help them in whatever ways that we can, but we are trying constantly through that to point them to the Lord, because mm-hmm. that's what it's about. Yeah. Find your fulfillment in Christ. Find your help. Find your hope yeah. in Christ. And it's the only way yes. they'll get through the crisis. And I am not the Christ. Right. <laughs> I exactly. love you, but I'm not him. Yes. And I can't, I can't fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> and in one way, we can be like really prideful, like, oh, I'm going to help them and yes. be their savior. Not that we would think that sentence, but right. you know, and on the other hand, sometimes we get in too deep and we just like have a bleeding heart for a person. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, this is too much. It's now affecting my family yes. and, you know, my kids, my husband, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're not even really helping the person anyway, mm-hmm. because they're just, they're still not going to the Lord. So yes. you're, like you said, you're failing them and doing them a disservice. So I think there's a lot of wisdom that needs to be used in crisis that yes. maybe is kind of an underlying thing that we're saying because you really need to discern whether or not you should text, how much you should say, what you yeah. should be praying for, what things you should be doing, mm-hmm. how much to get involved, what can you as a person carry, how can you help? Yes. You know, because if you're as exhausted as they are, you're not that much help anyway. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. You really need to ask the Lord for wisdom as you approach anything. I, I would say probably don't do anything rashly, you know, just yeah. like, I'm going to do that. Like, yeah. Okay, take a minute, think and about it, pray about it, and just see what the Lord's yes. asking you to do. Yeah. But don't pray so long you never do anything. Yeah. Which I, I just know something. I'm guilty know. of that. That's why I'm saying like, that. Well, I prayed for that. I'd be like, well, I'm really praying for wisdom. And then like <laughs> three months later, like, well, God hasn't told me yet what yeah, to do. Right. Like, come and on. And then the moment's passed. Exactly. And then it's over. It's I like, know never I'm mind. guilty of yes. that. That's yes. why I said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then emotionally caring for people. Yeah. Um, just showing that you care. Yeah. Um, just being with people. Sometimes there isn't anything to do. Right. You know, there really isn't anything to say. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just sitting with a person, yes. letting them cry. And a lot of people can be really uncomfortable. Obviously, it's not comfortable when anyone's right. sitting there crying. But you feel like, I need to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I have to have the <laughs> Like answer. you're going to provide the right answer yeah. for comfort. Like, exactly. Uh, you and know. you're not. Yeah. And especially in really, you know, devastating circumstances, mm-hmm. there's, like we said, there's not an answer. Yeah. There's just not. Yeah. And that's okay. And just being okay with that. Yeah. And, and, I, and just asking people how they are i a lot of times people are really good you think about a funeral or a a medical crisis or something Mm -hmm. people are really good right at first and a lot of you'll hear people say family say after the funeral gone well the the family is still dealing with the loss Mm -hmm. for ever you know for years and years you know they're whatever that loss was they're still dealing with that so 
remembering to walk with them even beyond the initial mm-hmm. atom bomb that went off in their life is helpful, yeah. you know, and continuing to ask even six months in, hey, how are you? Um, there have been, I've had friends that have miscarried or people that have lost loved ones where if they're close to me, you know, I haven't done this for everybody, so if you didn't get something for me, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> and I don't feel called to everybody, but you know, right, right. don't be offended. <laughs> but, um, but where I have set in my calendar a reminder on that day, and I've sent flowers mm-hmm. on the day I've had, thinking for you, about you today, praying for you, because of the, like, the anniversary of someone's passing. Yeah. Because it's, they're still dealing with that loss, and that day becomes a very sad memorial, you know, of that person's life. And it, and I think it's really lonely when you're in crisis and walking through something. And it's, it, no, again, no one can fix it, yeah. but just knowing that people are in it with you is yeah. helpful. Mm-hmm. That's really good. I'm sitting here thinking of ways to like, oh, this person, I should do this. Anyway, that's why I have, <laughs> don't know what the next question no, is fine. because I'm like sitting you're here good. like, oh yeah, that's good. I think, but I think emotionally as we just kind of, you know, and that part maybe just coming in where it talks about that verse in Colossians that you quoted that allowing our conversation to be seasoned with salt um, with grace so that it will, or uh, according to the need of the moment, so it will give grace to those who hear. Yeah. That we come into every situation, particularly in crisis, because it's so sensitive. I don't think people understand how mm-hmm. sensitive mm-hmm. crisis is and how sometimes people uh, will come to church, they're dressed, they have their makeup on, and inside it's mm-hmm. like, if someone looks at me crazy, I'm going to just fall on the floor in tears, yes. you know, and it, it's that fragile and just it, people can look like they're put together. But in the moment of crisis, yeah. like I remember being there the weekend after our house burned down and just feeling like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it was just so overwhelming. Yeah. And like, Lord, I just need you to walk me through this moment. I mean, I had makeup on, you know, and I was greeting people. Hey, you know, yeah. and it's not that it's fake, but you're just trying to, you know, like get through it, get through life and do life. And and people just need to be sensitive to where people are at in crisis like kid gloves a little bit like let's just treat each other with some kid gloves let them get through the crisis have a lot of grace yes be quick to forgive don't Mm -hmm. get offended yeah help us you're able right (laughs) a little bullet points for you (laughs) (laughs) um going back to our main verse we need to talk Mm -hmm. about because the verse says bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of christ Mm -hmm. fulfilling the law of christ um why should we care about this and what does fulfilling the law of christ really mean Mm -hmm. There are things we're commanded to as believers in Jesus Christ. When Jesus boiled down the commandments to two, he said, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Mm-hmm. And if you do those things, you will fulfill everything else. Yep. You're not going to lie to each other. You're not going to steal. You're not going to murder people yes. if you love, right? So this is part of obeying what God has asked us to do. Mm-hmm. It's a part of encouraging people. It's part of... Um, showing love to the body of Christ, but then it's also part of demonstrating to a lost and dying world what the love of Christ looks like. Yeah. Because when we serve unselfishly in crisis it is a different kind of love. Um, I remember Wes talking about a man that he called from our church. I was just remember? thinking about yeah. story. Yep. Where he, he has a medical issue and physically cannot get to his car. And there were people from the church showing up to get him to his car, to yeah. get him to appointments, mowing his lawn. And his lost neighbors were like, who are these people? Yeah. Like, are you paying? You know, and he's like, this is my church. Yeah. And they're showing up to help. It's powerful. Yeah. And it's a powerful testimony of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. I was going to tell that story if you didn't. Oh. I, was just thinking, I was like, I'm going to tell that story. <laughs> Dang it. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Story was, time with Aaron. Like, the story is what's <laughs> great. It's so powerful. Like, he says, um, the Bible says they will know we are Christians by yes. our love. Yes. And so demonstrating that as Christ demonstrated his love for us, um, it's powerful. And it's the gospel, mm-hmm. you know, like that is living, breathing gospel for lost people to mm-hmm. see. And it is <clears throat> incredible. It is breathtaking, really, when the church shows up. Yeah. And I have been in crisis myself where I needed to be caught by the church. And I've also seen people in crisis where it's been really fun to connect people and help like, oh, I know this person could help that person. And and just to watch the church in action yeah. is incredible. Mm-hmm. Where you're like, the Lord, you know, yeah. puts all these people and these skills and these gifts and these resources together and he takes mm-hmm. care of it, yeah. you know? It's so powerful. It's neat. Um, so I guess we've kind of already talked about this a little bit throughout mm-hmm. um, being the person in crisis mm-hmm. and how we can bear that burden well, mm-hmm. um, which obviously every crisis is different. Every situation is different, but as people are coming alongside of you and trying to help you and bear your burdens, like 
you're still in the crisis and you're mm-hmm. still having to deal with whatever's going on, all the logistics and whatever the situation is, but also dealing with the Lord as to like, God, like, what are you trying to do through this? Right. And there's so much that goes into it. So how do we do that well? First and foremost, you need to lean on the Lord. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to you have to rest in his promises. And sometimes that is very, very difficult because you can't see with physical eyes how things are going to play out, how mm-hmm. they're going to turn out. But he is your hope in crisis we ourselves when we're carrying the crisis can sometimes be offended because we feel like people should be doing certain things or showing up in certain ways and then we're offended at people for not you know why didn't you help in this way I would have thought that person would showed up and I have been amazed when I'm carrying something in crisis there are maybe four or five people where I would think if I was going to pick these people that are really going to bear my burdens not that they haven't right right but I would pick these people but sometimes it's people out of absolute left field yeah. that the provision comes through and you just are amazed. And I really think, so I could get offended at people like, well, why didn't you do this thing for me? Mm-hmm. Right. But it's amazing because to me, it's more indicative of the Lord providing because if I, if I looked at my human relationships and the provision came there, then I'm almost in some way resting and hoping in those yeah. people when it's from someone totally left field. I'm like, well, that would could only be the Lord yeah. that would have told that person that I needed help. And they did this, this small thing for me. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes me turn my eyes toward Christ more. Yeah, that's so true. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's because I have been offended yeah, in yeah. crisis before <laughs> and then felt the Lord like, Aaron, I'm your help. Like right. not that person, I'm your help. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> and giving grace to those people. Yes. That maybe, I mean, we've talked, we've spent how long talking about how we yes. don't do crisis very well. Yeah. And so just realizing that and extending grace to people that maybe don't know what to do. Yeah, just so much grace. Just give people grace. Yes. Everybody just be just nice. Just everybody be nice. Like <laughs> nobody knows what anybody else is carrying. They don't. And, and they never know the whole story. Right. They don't know everything that goes into it. And a lot of times they're just really trying. Yes. And I have friends that their own lives are a lot. So, yeah. And I, I know they they love me and their motive would be to help me, but maybe they just can't that yeah, week. And like, I can't be mad about that because sometimes they're in crisis and it's like, this is like the worst week. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I- I'll door dash you something. You know right. what I'm saying? Literally, that's literally all that I can do. Yes. And I'm, I'm really like sorry. Like you're looking through your calendar like, when can I help? I can't. I can't. Yeah. You know, and it's not it's not that I don't love you. It's that this is... This couldn't, there couldn't be a worse time, you yeah. know, and, and, and I have situations, to trust the Lord. Yeah, exactly. Trust mm-hmm. the Lord that like, you're not the person that's going to do right. it and he's going to provide another way mm-hmm. because you're not their savior. Right. <laughs> and we have to let the Lord then speak to us through circumstance and through provision. I, I remember not to like continuously make it about me and stuff, but I remember one time being in Target right after that house fire and I was just having a really just a, you know, you're just having a day where I was just so overwhelmed with everything that had to be replaced and all the money. You just feel like you're constantly just bleeding money and you're, you're like, just buying like toothbrushes yes. and stuff that like, oh, I, I had one of these. <laughs> you know? And I was thinking, a spoon. you just feel so materialistic because you're like a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, right. you know, and I, and I would sit and be like, do we need all this? Stuff? I guess everyone does probably need two pairs of pajamas and you know, like I'm not being crazy. <laughs> right. Like we really do need this They're stuff. They're just things needed. Yeah. So I was in Target. I was doing a return and this lady walked up to me who I don't even know. And she's like, oh, I go to The Rock. And so I was trying to be like, oh, does she have a question? And, you know, and she's like, I just want to give this to you. And it was a gift card. And she just walked away. And I was like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't even know your name. She's like, no, no, it's fine. Uh And just walked away. And so I didn't know what was on it. And I shopped for kids. I was buying a bunch of stuff for seven people. And I remember just you're kind of like sick about it as you're throwing stuff in your car. You're like, oh, my gosh. And I remember the bill was like two ninety six or something, and I thought, well, I'll just give them the gift card, and whatever's on here is on here. Yeah. Thought, maybe fifty bucks or mm-hmm. something, and it was three hundred dollars. Wow! And I was like, I mean, I could like almost cry thinking about it, but uh-huh. I remember just it was like the Lord was saying to me in that moment, Aaron, I've got you. Like it's mm-hmm. gonna be okay, and I will. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Whew, I will walk you through every step, mm-hmm. and I'll meet you every step, and it, and it's fine, you know. Yeah. Like and and to see those moments when you're the one in crisis to cling to those things, like. There are going to be more things that are overwhelming. There are going to be more meetings that are hard. There are going to be more things. But he reminded me in that moment, you don't have everything that you need right now, but yeah. step by step, you'll have it when you need it. And and that's who I am, that I will catch you. And when you, you need things, I'll bring people in. And I think that is, if we keep our eyes focused on Christ, when we're the one in crisis mm-hmm. and we look for those ways that he's showing up, we will see him work in astounding ways as only he can. Mm-hmm. And that brings encouragement to our souls. Yeah. 
we can get inward focused in the midst of something hard. We can mm-hmm. be so focused on the pain that we're feeling or the things we have to do. Yes. And we get so focused inwardly rather than setting our minds and our eyes on things above and knowing that God is our provider. He is our refuge. He mm-hmm. is our comfort. It's who he is. Mm-hmm. And we say those things and we sing about him in church and we will say him to other people. But a lot of times in the midst of it, we're not focused on those things anymore. Right. And if we could set our eyes where they need to be, it would make crisis a lot easier. Yeah. That is first and foremost. And if we don't, we waste it. You know, yeah. the reality is no one really wants to be in the hospital. Right. You know, if I end up in the hospital, I don't, it's not really where I don't really enjoy hospitals. Right. But if I can keep my eyes focused on it not being about me, as much mm-hmm. as this is my crisis, it's not about me. This is still about the kingdom of God. And yeah. is there a nurse there that doesn't know the Lord? Is there a doctor that needs encouraging? Right. Can I make a difference even in the middle of my crisis in somebody else's life? And I think that in a way redeems the crisis, at least for me, because mm-hmm. then I find purpose in it. And it's like, okay, if I can stay on mission, if I can stay remembering that this is about something greater. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll just pray, Lord, like, I don't want to stay here forever. So if you could show me <laughs> what in my character I needs will to be refined. what I need to do <laughs> exactly. and move on. <laughs> like, what's the part that needs perfecting? Let's do that. Yeah. Show it to me. Give me eyes to see. Help me understand. Um, but yeah, not making it about ourselves. And I think if we can serve in our crisis, it helps us have encouragement, you know, like you said, we can just get so inward focused and so depressed and woe is me and nobody knows the mm-hmm. trouble and my crisis is the worst. And the reality is somebody else has it out there worse than you do. Yeah. There, you're, you don't have the corner on hard things. Mm-hmm. We live in a really broken world. Yeah. And so if we can, even I guess in crisis, I guess just don't make it about yourself too, mm-hmm. you know, as much as you can. Yeah. I love um, in Nehemiah, it says, that they bore their burden in one hand and they had the sword in the other. And I just think that's such an amazing picture of, yeah, we have burdens, but we still fight forward. Mm -hmm. We don't lose ground. We don't let it, we sometimes give ourselves excuses to be ungodly. Like, well, this is so hard. So I'm just gonna, Mm -hmm. you know, go get drunk or I'm just gonna go, you know, cheat and lie or whatever, be angry or be unkind. If we can continue to be godly, even in crisis, that will help us bear mm-hmm. it well. And like you just said a second ago, even being on mission, not mm-hmm. just being godly, but being, you know, pushing past mm-hmm. that, like, okay, God, how can you use me in this? How can I not waste this time? Mm-hmm. How can I see what you're trying to bring out of it? And that's, again, really easy to say sitting in this chair here. I realize it's harder in yes. person, but if we can get our minds set on that before the crisis comes, yes. almost I mean, we're all going to go through things in life that are hard. Mm -hmm. Like you said, our world is broken. The crises are coming. They are. They are. And so how can we prepare our minds and our hearts Mm -hmm. even now to be ready in the midst of that? Yep. And then try as you can to rest. Mm -hmm. Be honest with people about the help that you need. You know, don't, don't be a hero. Yep. You know, when people offer help and it's appropriate to let them help, you know, I'm not going to just say to perfect stranger, yeah, watch my kids. But to certain <laughs> people, please watch my kids, mm-hmm. you know, where it's appropriate, accept the help that you can mm-hmm. and, and be honest. It's okay to have bad days in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, I had a friend that had lost, she had had several miscarriages and I'll never forget. I asked her, you know, how are you doing? And she's super solid believer. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, I just have to kind of go through this, the emotions of it till I end up back at God. And I mm-hmm. love that because I thought, yeah. Because sometimes I am mad about it or I'm struggling and I'm sad and I'm depressed mm-hmm. and I still know who God is. And I'm going to get there. And I'm going to get there, but I'm just trying to walk it out. Yeah. that part, that's hard sometimes. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, we need to let people have bad days. Yes. I think often we can think like, oh, I'm supposed to be rejoicing, so I'm going to be happy. Or like you said, we can all look <laughs> happy at church, but yeah. like, it's okay if you're not. And it's okay to tell people how you're really doing and you don't yeah. have to pretend like, I'm strong and I can handle this and mm-hmm. I have the Lord, so I'm not supposed right. to struggle. I'm right. supposed to be able to handle it. Right. Um, but that's really good. I love that going through the emotions. And yeah. God. And then we need to let people have their emotions as we support people in it because sometimes we just will say well you know it's going to work out okay that's Mm -hmm. super invalidating to where I'm at right now like just if it's but you're better off to be like it is hard and just leave it like don't say anything else just validate where I'm at and I'm going to get through it I know who the Lord is I will come back to scripture at this exact moment I'm just really having a hard time yeah (laughs) just let me have my moment I'll sleep and tomorrow it'll be better but (laughs) yeah exactly yeah that's good um Anything else about bearing burdens? About covered all of it. I'm no, just kidding. Like we, kidding. We did really did great. No, no. <laughs> no, it's, this is really, I think, helpful. I mean, even to me to sit here and think like, how have I done this badly? How can mm. I be prepared to do it better in the yeah. future? Um, and even how can I be, be prepared 
in my heart and mind and with the Lord to when those things it. come. Yeah. And so, yeah, walk out the things that we're saying we should do in the mm-hmm. midst of crisis. So yeah. we hope that this was helpful to you. We hope that moving forward in your life, maybe you are more able to walk worthy in crisis, mm-hmm. um, helping people, bearing one another's burdens, whatever the situation calls for, according to the need of the moment, led by the Holy Spirit. Um, we will see you next month. But until then, walk worthy. Thank you.